Okay. All right, today we have a 40-inch Vizio. Uh, the model number on this set is a E, as an Echo, 400i-B2. And basically what's happening with this set, uh, it's totally dead. Um, there's no light. I think there's a light that usually comes on when you hit the power button. This, this set uh, just has a single power button. There's no other buttons on here. Uh, so you'll definitely need, need your remote, uh, your original remote to operate the functions on this set. On this set, and let's see if I can show you here. Uh, probably for me with this set. Um, where is that button? It's actually. Uh, let's get some light. Uh, button is actually right here. Okay, that's the power button, and we actually press it. And um, as you can see, uh, there's nothing that nothing that happens there. We'll keep just press it again. Absolutely nothing. No lights. No clicking sound. No nothing. So let's break this baby apart and uh, see what's going on with it. Okay. I'm gonna take the back cover off. All I have to do is remove this. I've actually already removed most of the screws uh, in here. Um, so of course there's four screws for the stand here. One, two, three, four. And that'll slide right out. And then, uh, of course, you got your other screws. I want you to remove that. Uh, this is a little tricky. Uh, you will have to take a little prior and pry the back cover off. And so, let's see here. I'll just. Okay, of course, uh, the first time is going to be a little bit harder than that. I've already taken the back cover off. And uh, do not uh, just pull it off after it's loose. Uh, you do still have some connections here. Uh, you have a connection for the, off, the power button. Okay, we'll disconnect that. Which is looking on the back cover, and also, of course, for the speakers. Okay, so we'll disconnect that. The term and uh, <coughs> place that over there, and then um, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, now we have our uh, back cover off, and uh, just give you a basic rundown on these boards here. Uh, this is of course the power supply board where the power cord is going in at and of course your main board is right here and this is the LED uh, driver board okay as you can see uh, this wire here is going directly inside of the TV to the uh, LEDs um, so uh, basically it's a dead set uh, of course it is unplugged make sure we unplug it first first thing you want to check is the fuse which is located right here that is the main fuse coming from the uh, AC line so we'll check that got our meter here on um, diode or resistance it should read uh, zero uh, ohms or continuity like that okay okay that fuse um, is good Okay, now the next thing we want to check um, is our uh, standby voltage. The fuse is good. Um, and uh, see if we're getting that. Uh, of course, this is the plug going to the main board. As we can see, it is labeled, it is marked. Uh, the first two pins, one and two, are the uh, five volt standby one and two and that's what we want to check and see if we have that because that's going to determine if it's the main board or a power supply problem and um, so we got five around it. If we do not have the 5 volts there, uh, we definitely know that we have a main board. I'm sorry, <laughs> if, we do, if we do not have the 5 volt standby here, we know that we definitely have a, um, a power supply problem. And if we do, uh, most likely we may have a main board problem. We just have to do further investigation. So let's just see here what we get. We'll put our meter on DC volts. And check the plug is labeled one, okay, up to uh, I think 15 pins. And so we'll just zoom out here so you can see my meter. Okay, uh, meters on DC volts. 
I also going to ground it right here. I did check if this is uh, ground, cold ground there. Okay, because we are on the cold side of the uh, power supply there. And um, we're going to actually plug our TV in. Let's just check this pin here. Pin one. Okay, uh, it's supposed to be five volts. Just, just that standby. So basically, what standby means is there's supposed to be five volts there uh, before the power is turned on, because it's on standby. So that means it's ready for you to turn the power supply on, so everything else in the TV can work. But unfortunately, instead of just being 5 volts or 4.7, which is usually close to 4.8, uh, it is jumping a around. Okay, so that is definitely a problem. Okay, now, um, just a little further investigation, we want to just make sure that the main board is not pulling that down. So what we'll do is um, unplug the main board here. Okay, and we'll check it again. Okay. Ah, uh -huh. now it's supposed to be five. That's what it's supposed to be five volts. Now, uh, don't let that fool you because the main board uh, could be pulling that down, or it could be the power supply um, getting pulled down when there's a load on it, which will be the main board. So we have to kind of determine that. So the next thing that we actually want to do is just to, uh, just unplug it. Okay, we'll unplug the power cord, uh, put it back on the resistance. I actually want to use a diode scale, and what we're going to do is check the 5 volt standby line resistance, okay, and see if, if it's, uh, you know, very low once I plug the main board into it, okay. Alright, so, you know, that's a uh, pretty good reading, and we want to just check the resistance. Yeah, that's pretty good, okay, you can see a capacitor sort of, I guess, charging up. But uh, about, about a megahertz or so, um, I'm sorry, mega ohm. <laughs> now, let's plug it back in. Now, if it goes down to like zero or like 200 ohms or 100 ohms or less than 100 ohms, we definitely have a problem on the main board because there's a short, uh, something that's leaking and pulling down. Well, you know, it's not that much difference, okay? Uh, as we can see, there's a capacitor coming down. It's about uh, 2.5 um, uh, kilo ohms, okay. So, hmm, kind of wondering. So, our next check uh, we're going to do is because there's a plug, we want to make sure that we already unplugged the main board, okay, and then we see that the voltage, um, you know, stayed there, but when plugging in, we'll plug the main board in, the voltage uh, is jumping around and it's not steady, okay. So, uh, because of that, we're just going to unplug and make sure there's not this board here. We're just going to unplug the plug that's going from the main board to the LED driver board. Okay, that is this plug right here. Okay, and make sure that that's not pulling it set down. Okay. So I'm plugging in my TV. Once again, she was in standby. And I'm going to check our 5 volts once again. Our 5 volt standby once again. Okay. Still jumping around. Okay. Well, that leads me to believe since we didn't have a much of a resistance difference once we unplugged the main board connector. I'm just going to kind of assume, because I'm having experience with these Vizio power supply boards, that something is breaking down under load. And uh, the way it's jumping around there, it could be a bad capacitor or something like that. So, um, we'll just take a quick overlook. Let me unplug the TV first of the uh, main board here. And, uh, hey, wait a minute. What do you know? I've got a suspect here, 
Okay. I think we have a suspect. Let's zoom in there. As we look on the primary side of our power supply, what do you see? What do you see? A puffed electrolytic capacitor. The top is not flat, it is puffed. That is not good, okay? And just right below that, I see another capacitor. I'm not sure what kind of capacitor they call this, but uh, it's uh, is it metal oxide? I'm not sure, but it's not electrolytic. But this is also a capacitor, uh, just like this one I think over here on this side. But look at that! Look at that! That is not supposed to look like that. Now, just see what visual inspections can do. All right. So let's find the value of those components and change them. But before we even do that. Because of those two components, uh, the circuit might be damaged. Or most likely, it might be something else there. So we're just going to check our little diodes here. I see about four diodes uh, right in that same circuit, maybe. And we'll just check that. Okay, that's not diode. That's for right bead. Okay, so I'm supposed to read short. That's reading pretty good. Here, let me zoom out so you can see my uh, meter here. good and that's good okay now uh, I do see some fence in front of this heat sink right here so I'm definitely going to check that uh, before I start changing capacitors and everything you always want to you know see stuff like that don't just just throw stuff in there always check components around it especially MOSFETs diodes um, even uh, coils okay make sure they're not open and uh, definitely other capacitors. Okay, so let's gonna pull. I'm just gonna pull this board out, and uh, we're gonna do some further investigating on here. Okay. Also, because uh, this board is connected with this pin plug right here to the driver board, okay, we're just gonna um, take some. It's got like a little stopper right here, so you actually have to lift, lift it up, and then pull it out. So we're gonna have to take some screws out of this driver board also, so we can actually uh, lift up and we can pull those boards apart. Um, as you can see, the uh, capacitor, the electrolytic one, is um, uh, 220 microfarads at, I think, 25 volts. Okay. And the um, other capacitor here is, uh, I think that's 33 uh, picofarads. Um, but we're gonna just going to pull, pull both of those out of the circuit and uh, check the values of them, okay? Because we already know that they're, they're bad. So <laughs> just pull it on out and check it and uh, get that over with. And also check the components around. I'm going to check the actual MOSFETs uh, also. Um, okay, um, these are the three pins here, the two MOSFETs here. There we go. Okay. And as you can see, that's C105. Um, that is the capacitor here um, and the electrolytic one next to it um, right here 
uh, it's way up here I really can't see it you can probably see it on camera but it's right here it's like C112 uh, okay uh, so we'll, we'll pull we'll check these first uh, make sure they're not shorted uh, as a matter of fact I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just show you how to check them uh, from some comments that I've had um, so uh, let's just see here those are my fets let's zoom down a little bit okay Once again, these are on the primary side of the power supply. These, these circuit here was actually driving this transformer. And uh, the voltage is coming out of here being rectified and then going through different voltage sources, okay? Uh, which also includes the 5 volt standby, okay? So this is the drive side on the, this is the drive side um, here, separated by this, this, this black line. This black line is separating the primary side and the secondary side of the power supply. All right. So anyway, do a quick check right here. Okay. Put our meat on the dial scale. Best what you really want to check for is a short, because that's going to be your most common fault uh, with these MOSFETs. Uh, I've had a few open ones, very few, but most of them, most of the time they're going to be short. Okay, and if they're the same, they're the same uh, ones. Just make sure that you get the same reading on the pins there. See, that's um, we're going from I think gate to source. I'm not sure, but. Uh, that's, an, that's a, uh, open and that's reading open and if we switch it about 500 500 okay or 0.5 ohms or whatever I mean uh, 500 ohms whatever is, is reading um, 1.9 1.9 so okay so those are that's a good sign that those are good Put a little solder on uh, each component here. Where are you? There we go. Okay, this capacitor here. We'll just pull those out. And then I always like to pull my stuff out of the circuit if it's not, you know, too hard, and uh, double check it. That way I know I can get an accurate reading. And then I'll add some Sarda wick to remove it. It's kinda, I'm sorry, it's kind of hard for you guys to see me working here, but. Okay. So anyway, you guys get the picture. It's probably going to take me a minute to pull it out, but just. Uh, Put the solder work on there and um, should tend my iron first, that might help. Okay. And the solder will pretty much come most of the way off. And uh, it actually gets to the point sometimes I'll just heat up one side and from the other side I actually go with my hand and just pull it out. Uh, ooh, got shocked by capacitor. Uh, just like that, you know what I'm saying, I'll just heat this side up, as a matter of fact, maybe I can do it here while I've got the video running. So I'm going to grab the capacitor right here. Hello, there we go, okay. And I'll just um, find it on this side, I'll heat up one side, pull it out, heat up the other side. Voila, that easy. And look at it, yeah. That capacitor is drunken. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's to the point of uh, no return on that one. So I know that one is bad, definitely. Uh, so I'm going to find something uh, close, at least close to it, 
if I don't have the exact one, just for testing purposes, okay? Um, so even if I put one in there, then it does come along with the, like, and, you know, maybe beep or whatever it does, like chuck, chuck, or uh, something, you know, uh, that is an indication that I just get to have to get the correct one. And with the electrolytic capacitor over here, let's see if I can try the old Heimlich maneuver with that one. I call the Highland. This is the pack capacitor right here, and as you can see, yes, uh, that is bulged. Uh, it's at 220 microfarad capacitor, at I believe 25 volts. Heating up both sides. Sorry, you can't see that on camera. Come on. Okay. And voila. And 225 volts. I'm talking 220 microfarads at uh, 35 volts. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that we have that one. And as a matter of fact, let's uh, double check it with our little capacitor check and let's see how good that um, this one here is I just recently purchased this one I had the old school one which I, th I think is actually better the one that uh, I forget like the B&K one um, it's much easier to read but this one seemed pretty nice okay um, pretty accurate in circuit it's, it's actually in circuit um, but to me as far as I can, this is my opinion it is much cheaper but it's just a little harder to read seems like and it's kind of steady uh, this one actually came with these um, came with the regular leads okay the clip leads and also came with this one here uh, which I really do not like I do not think it's accurate because when you go to zero it you have to hold it together like here hold it up shut the leads together and then hold zero the zero button and then it says zero and please wait It never goes to zero. It just jumps around. You know, see what I'm saying? And I'm not, I'm not moving. So I'm, let's let's try that again. See? But with these leads here, the original ones that's that's supposed to, um, you know, the original ones that come with it, I pay a little extra because they have those nice leads, which I thought were really nice, uh, like on the uh, B and K one. But let's try this one. And as you can see, it's steady, right? And I go to zero it. Basically, you just have to short the leads together to zero it. Let it go. Zero and please wait. See what I'm saying? So it's at 0 .6, 0 0.06 ohms. So it's not moving. It's not jumping around or anything. So, so that's pretty good. And so we'll just put our... Now, we're usually on a meter like this is an ESR meter. Okay, so you don't really need to... Uh, match the the black with the the negative, and you could do it either way. But I'm just, just for, for testing purposes. I'm gonna put a capacitor there, and it says 0.66 ohms, which means uh, good if capacitor is less than 200 microfarads, uh, which it is not. Okay, let's see if I can zoom in on that. Hold on one second, so you can see that. Because I have noticed this meter is pretty handy but like I said you have to go through all that reading and stuff just to find out um, if the capacitor is good or bad with on the other one it's like the B&K one and there's another one too that I forget what they call it but you know it's one with the little bar graph where it goes from green to red to yellow yeah just you know and you know if it's good or bad so <laughs> uh, uh, here we go zoom in on that and it says good it says good if capacitor is less than 200 microfarads, okay, that's actually 225. Um, 200, um, I'm sorry, 220 microfarads. Yeah, 220 microfarads. Now I'm going to use my regular meter here. as well as capacitor to check it. Uh, checker. Um, it's not ESR. It's mainly for out of circuit. I have I have uh, checked some capacitors with this meter in circuit. And sometimes it's pretty accurate, but it's, it's much more accurate reading out of the circuit because it doesn't use that uh, series. Okay, before I so really interrupt it from my camera, I didn't know I, I ran out of memory. It actually cut off on me. Um, I'm just going to 
see if I can actually pick up where I left off. I'm testing these capacitors with these two meters. I'm pretty sure you've seen this meter here um, on the internet for sale. Um, it's pretty handy. Um, I'll find my old stuff here. Okay. Um, like I was saying, um, this capacitor here, which you can see is obviously has obviously exploded pretty much. I want to use this meter first. <clears throat> this reader does read the value of the capacitor, uh, which is good, which I like about this meter. It actually will give you the value of the capacitor or the charging time, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, this is actually supposed to be, this 333J is supposed to be uh, 33 nanofarads, okay? And as you can see, uh, it's reading like one nanofarad, okay? Um, which is probably what it read if I short the release together. Well, not quite, okay? And then we'll check this one here and see if we get it. Now, right now it says reading is overflow. Put this on here. See what we get. Nothing. Okay. I'm trying to look for the bad one that we just had. Okay. Here is our puffed up 220 microfarad capacitor at 35 volts. You can see that, but. Well, the zoom in camera. Okay, anyway. Alright, so we'll check this one using this capacitor checker here. And, um, this one's reading about 105 microfarads. Okay, so that's about half of what it should be. Okay. And this one will say. It says good capacitors less than 200 microfarads. Okay, so I guess it's pretty much accurate. It's just 220, so if it was like 150 or 100, I guess it would be good. So uh, that's saying that's bad. Now, this is our new um, I don't know why I won't zoom in there, but. Two twenty at thirty five volts. Two twenty microfarads, thirty five volts. Okay, let's see what kind of reading we get through this one. With our Agilent here, okay, two hundred thirteen microfarads. And as you can see on the left side there, see that's the indication that it is charging fairly quickly. Okay. And this one should say good. Okay, what's well, just gonna say? It's gonna give us a value and all that crazy stuff. Let me see. Okay. Now this one actually does say good. Good capacitor with low E S R. Okay. So that's the good one. That one is good. We'll set that off to the side. And this, of course, we checked the this one here. And I actually, uh, actually, I looked this up. Uh, I double checked this on the internet, and it's just 33 nanofarads. Uh, I did find a 22 nanofarad one. Okay, so we'll probably just try that in there. It really shouldn't hurt anything um, if it's supposed to be specific. But actually, we, we might have uh, modified <laughs> right modified the circuit so it's better. Uh, can I zoom out there? What's going on here? What's going on here with my camera today? I don't know. I really don't know. There we go. Okay. This is a 22 nanofarads. Okay, so we're 10 nanofarads off. So, I just want to show you how our meters compare here now. 
I'm going to check it with this one. And as you can see, it says, uh, you know, reading is overflow. And I'll check it with this one here. And it says the same thing. It's not, it won't even check it. Okay, so basically this is, this is just for electrolytic capacitors, obviously. But this one I know for a fact, that's why I like this, this meter right here, I know for a fact uh, this meter can check all the way down to the picofarads uh, as far as measurements. Okay, so come here and um, where are you at? Where are you at? There we go right there. And we'll check it. Look at that. 21 nanofarads. Okay, so this one is reading. So that let us know that the other one definitely was bad because I didn't get any reading at all. It should have said 33 nanofarads. Okay, but uh, obviously that was not the case. As a matter of fact, I do have another one here. I think this is supposed to be 47 nanofarads. Let's see what this one is reading. Okay, this, this, this meter here is very good. I want to ask somebody in my comments say using that fake fluke. Well, let me tell you something, baby. This might be better than the fluke right here, okay? I only paid 160 bucks for it about four years ago, so. Okay. 481 nanofarads, okay? So we definitely not want to use something that's this big in a circuit that only uses 33 nanofarads because what's going to happen, you know, you're going to end up blowing something up. Okay, so. All right, so we'll set that to the side. We'll, we'll plop this uh, 22 in here. And this, um, we do have the exact capacitor in there. Uh, you probably do want to go higher as far as value. Um, uh, as far as the voltage value, this is only a, come on now. What, come on, what you doing? What you doing, baby? <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, you probably want to go a higher voltage rating. This is uh, 220 at uh, 25 volts. That's weird. Yeah, it's 220 at 25 volts. Um, there we go. That's much better. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 220 at 35 volts. So you probably want to go 220 at 50 just to kind of make sure, you know what I'm saying, it doesn't happen because this TV is probably only about uh, two or three years old. So, But we're going to just throw the exact placement in for right now because that's all that we have. We don't have the 50, 50, 50 voltage range. Okay, so I've got those in there. We'll just solder them in. Make sure you clip off the excess leads. Otherwise, you will be sorry when you put it in there. Okay. Just solder it in first. Clip our leads off. Now, when you clip those leaves off, make sure that you don't get them on the floor because uh, if you actually step on one and you're barefooted, um, yeah, you're gonna have to go to the doctor. <laughs> right? So, uh, I always try to find us kind of sticking up kind of high, but we can always tilt it over a little bit. And I also want to make sure that it's not um, touching this metal shield here. So, I'm gonna just kind of move it over a little bit. Actually, I should have put it in a little a little further in, but that, that's okay for right now. Okay. Um, Matter of fact, I think I will do that. I'll just solder both ends here. Just push it in a little closer down. Okay. Clip off the excess. Another visual inspection looks pretty good to me. All right, let's throw it back in the TV. Okay, uh, we've got our power supply screw back in, and like I said, remember to uh, lift this board up over these two little obstacles right here, and uh, that way you can connect it from right there. And uh, so everything's connected back up. We're going to put in our power cord here. 
Oh, what do you know? The light came on. Wow. That's a good sign. Okay, we didn't have that light before, remember? Okay. We're going to check out standby voltage. Five volts. It is steady at five volts. And as you will see, we do have our main board connected. Okay, so that's a damn good sign. The light came on. Our five volts is steady. Our five volts standby. So all I have to do now is hook the power button up to the main board. Okay, uh, which goes to the plug right here. So we actually physically turn it on. And let's hopefully everything is going to be okay. Okay. We've got our uh, back cover back on. Uh, make sure that you plug in the speakers and the plug in for the power switch. Okay, plug it in. Get a little light back there. Okay. Now for the real test. Hit the power button. Light comes on. Voila. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. So this, is, this goes to show you that uh, just by our, us using a visual inspection of uh, boards, I've noticed a lot of times I've worked on TVs, I'm like, hmm, man, it's weird, you know what I'm saying? It's a weird problem, it's a weird voltage check. And I just look at the main board, I'll see like a burnt up uh, little regulator on the main board, I'll see, like I said, like we just seen a uh, blown um, square box style capacitor, they'll be puffed up, you know, and, um, and like I said, even though we checked that 5 volt standby and it was... It, it was very, it was variating, jumping up and down, um, with the power, with the main, with the main, main board plugged into the power supply. And we disconnected the main board. Uh, the five volts was steady, which will make you actually think that it was a main board problem. Uh, that's why that you do the resistance check, uh, just to be sure. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to uh, hook up a, like a separate load or something to just see. Um, you know, if it's really the power supply board or the main board, but in this case it was the power supply board. Uh, what happens when we put the load on it from the main board and the, um, the uh, standby circuit uh, and the main board uh, that uses the 5 volts, uh, it just loaded the circuit down and it was regulated because there was something uh, that was weak and faulty, okay? Wasn't producing enough current. So, anyway, <laughs> I know it's a lot of jibber jabbers, but anyway, uh, I'm glad we found the problem. And hey, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, God bless and uh, Big Dog out.